Welcome to part one in this multi-part series with winery owner Dustin Tarpine of Millville, New Jersey. Learn how he and his partner Stephen Becker started Cedar Rose Vineyards and Winery. When we started, I mean, a big part of why we wanted to do what we were doing was um, just because we had seen these other wineries and, you know, um, it, it just kind of... I would say we, we always wanted to have the winery for sure. We always wanted to have a, a winery and a building, um, you know, with a tasting room and all that stuff, uh, you know, and we always knew we wanted to be making wine and all that. In the beginning, I would say, I mean, we basically, I, I remember that we had actually pitched it to our partners. I think it was as like three options. So we said, all right, well, we can do a couple things here, right? We can We can either continue expanding the vineyard and make the vineyard larger and then sell grapes and become mainly, you know, like a vineyard operation, uh, you know, and then make some money and then maybe eventually put a winery in, you know, or we can, uh, you know, we can go ahead and put this winery in and then and, and go that route. So originally, the plan originally, honestly, when we started the construction of the building, we wanted we were going to start try to start out selling wholesale first. So I, I, I kind of had the thought like, all right, let's get our because I know the tasting room, the hospitality aspect is a whole. I mean, it's a, it's a monster of a job, and I knew that was going to be the case. And with everything else going on, I'm like, well, maybe we don't want to take this on right now. So originally, the building was constructed. We didn't even have a tasting room. It was just going to be an office in the front, and then I was going to basically focus on wholesale and getting outlets open. Um, and then a couple of years down the road, once we get our feet under us, we get a little reputation. You know, let's go ahead and open a tasting room up. But uh, one of my one of my partners, Dom, he uh, he basically woke up bolt upright in the middle of the night uh, and decided that we didn't have any way to make money because uh, we don't have a tasting room. So he, he became kind of fixated on this idea, which I mean, I, I didn't fully agree with him, but at the same time, me and Steve did want to, <laughs> to have a tasting room. So, I mean, he wanted to, and he wanted to push for it and he was okay. They were okay with putting the expense out and that was going to be required to do it. So I'm like, all right, well, it looks like we're going to get our tasting room a little earlier than expected. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, to go back to the original question though, I mean, the, the, the dream was always there to have the winery for sure. Um, a lot of the stuff that's come out since then uh, about the way that we specifically do business here, I mean, with the, with actually having a kitchen here and all that stuff, that was more kind of came more out organically out of the process of just, okay, you know, we need to raise revenue. We need to bring, uh, we need to bring more customers in. You know, we get a lot of requests for food. Everyone always wants to have food. You know, maybe, maybe we just pivot and, and go into this food thing. And that was, that was kind of where, where that, how that ended up happening. But, but originally, yeah, we, we always wanted to, we always wanted to have a, a place where people could come and enjoy themselves and, and drink good wine and, and really be in a nice, a nice atmosphere. So that, that was definitely always something that we were uh, that we were thinking about all the way along the way. When COVID hit, we drastically changed our business model. Um, so you know we couldn't do we couldn't do tastings really, which it was like the number one reason why people came in because they were going to make us put up all this plexiglass and everyone was going to wear masks. And it's just like, when I envisioned the tasting experience, when I, when I envisioned what that would look like and how that would feel the customers, I basically, I just said, no, we're not doing it. So we, we decided to just stop doing tastings um, and stop doing bar service and translated everything over to table service, which is, we never operated that way. But the, the thing is, once we moved over to table service, I'm like, okay, well, look, we already have these people sitting down at a table now. We already have a server coming to them. You know, we have all this stuff going on. You know, let's, why don't we just try to get some food in here? So, so we actually started out, I was, I was the first chef um, and, and I can cook, I can cook pretty well. Um, you know, not in a commercial setting. I've never cooked really in a, in a commercial setting apart from like, working in a snack bar. Um, but you know, I can, I can, I can learn pretty quickly. So we basically started out by, we bought a couple panini presses <laughs> and I had like a toaster oven, I think that was in there. 
and I just laid it all out on a bench or on a, like a work table basically. And just, uh, that's where we were doing the cooking at first. So it was just really simple stuff. You know, we had paninis and things like that. Um, and then that started to grow and pick up and I really didn't have the time to stay back there. Unfortunately, even though I do kind of like cooking, I really didn't have the time to stay back there. Um, so we ended up hiring somebody to work as a chef and, uh, and now I'm like, okay, well now I have this chef, we need to be doing like more food to justify her existence. So we, uh, you know, so we started, uh, we bought some other things and she was still cooking inside. And eventually what we actually did was we ended up just buying a food truck. So we actually ended up just, it's a food trailer really, but we just, uh, you know, I found a one that was at a reasonably good price for what it was, um, you know, to put a kitchen in and all of that is a major, major process and uh, not just the construction with regulations and everything else. Uh, but with a food truck, everything's a lot easier. So we ended up just buying this food truck and uh, we've slowly kind of figured out how to become a restaurant. Uh, you know, the toughest things are just the most basic things. I mean, just getting like hot food to somebody, you know, making sure that, you know, all the orders are right, having a way to print to the kitchen and having a way to make sure that if there's a special order or somebody didn't want something or whatever, that, that that's translated properly. Um, but I'm fortunate that I've, I've I've eaten out a lot in my life. Uh, you know, my, my, that's kind of like what my family likes to do, you know, for celebrations, birthdays and all that stuff. Like I like to go out to eat. So I've, I've been fortunate enough to be in a lot of nice restaurants and I've seen, you know, and I understand what the expectations are. So I think that helped a lot, but, um, but it's, it's been a learning process and it still is a learning process. I mean, we still are, we've gotten just to the point now where I don't feel like I need to constantly be present in order for things to run properly, which is good. Uh, you know, so we actually can, can, uh, can do the whole food thing pretty, pretty well now. I'm, I'm much happier with, with the way things are going. But yeah, at the beginning it was a, it was a tough challenge. It really was because, you know, I have, I have people working for me who were, they, they aren't servers. They never worked as servers. You know, they, they're, they're good, hardworking, you know, people, uh, you know, they're smart and they can, they're adaptable, but, um, you know, there's definitely a, uh, there was a lot to learn there. It was quite a, quite a hill to climb, but now we're there and, you know, we're known as a, as a food venue, uh, and people come here and, and the food's good. And, you know, now it's just trying to figure out how to tweak, you know, going forward a little bit at a time. One of our engineers recommended it to us. Actually, he just was like, "Why don't you guys just buy a food truck?" It was almost like a he almost said, like he said it offhandedly, almost as like a joke. And I was like, "Honestly, that's not a bad idea." And we just started looking into it. And the more I looked into it, I'm like, "Man, you know, because these food trucks are they're, they're expensive, but they're not that expensive considering what you can generate out of the thing." So it's it was uh, it was definitely. That that part, like, you know, when we were talking about things that we thought were going to happen at the beginning, I would have always loved to have food here, but I never in a million years thought that we'd already have food, you know, to be in three years into, into being open. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely a shock, but like I said, I mean, the customers ask for it, and, and it's uh, it's a huge draw. It keeps people here longer. You know, it's uh, it works. It works. It definitely brings people in. It's definitely worth doing. It's a, it's a crazy amount of work and extra stress, and the expectations are a lot higher than people just get in line. Um, but it's uh, it's been great, uh, a great addition to the business for sure. But yeah, we're fortunate. We do have some really awesome people working for us in the tasting room. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and they really they understand what the expectations are, and uh, you know they really they really take care of everybody. So we've been, I mean, as hard as it's been to find people in general, we've been really fortunate that the people we have found are doing a fantastic job. I mean, it's just, you know, we're really thankful for that. What exactly is going on here in, uh, in April out in the fields and what's, what's Stephen doing exactly? Yeah, so um, this is uh, this is kind of when everything starts waking up for the year. You know, the, the the winter gets a little slow for us. All we really do in the winter, as far as the grapevines go, is prune for the most part. Um, really, just and uh, every single year, you know, basically you you cut almost all of the all of the previous year's growth off um, and and cut them down pretty low. So that's a big job. It takes about fifty man hours an acre, I think, somewhere around there to prune. 
And you have to, they have some machines that do it, but mostly you do it by hand. So that's, we just finished up all that pruning. Um, so what he's actually out doing today is planting new vines. So um, one thing that I didn't get into yet, but, it, you know, I definitely wanted to talk about is, uh, so this is not the own, I think I mentioned this in our other uh, conversation, but uh, the other business that we operate out of here is VineTech LLC. And uh, VineTech is a uh, consulting and um, really a consulting and installation uh, firm for vineyards, basically. So we we founded the uh, we founded the business in 2013, um, and basically we we, yeah, we offer consulting services to help people figure out what to plant, uh, where to plant, help people find properties for new vineyard sites, uh, and then we also actually do the physical work of um, installing the vines, installing the trellis. And then we also, for some people, do the management and, and literally take care of the whole vineyard for them. So um, basically the planting season starts, started about two weeks, pretty much starts the beginning of April and goes through like the second week of May. Um, so in that time, we generally plant around 30 new acres of vineyard a year for clients. So he's, uh, he's out on the job today doing the planting. I'm not exactly sure where he's at, to be honest with you. But he's he's out um, doing the planting. Yeah, when um when the businesses kind of got to the point where Cedar Rose was going to open and become, you know, there was going to be a lot more work to actually operate the tasting room and everything else. We both kind of used to do everything, but once Cedar Rose uh, went to open up, uh, we basically divided the businesses, uh, the, the management of the businesses. So he pretty much he's the general manager for Vine Tech, and then I'm the general manager for Cedar Rose Vineyards. So, uh, so yeah, so that's where that's where he's at today, and that's where he'll, be, he'll probably be at for the next three weeks at least. Uh, it's a it's a huge it's a it's a huge job putting the new vineyard in. Don't forget to subscribe and like the show on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere you listen. And feel free to scroll back or jump forward or scroll down and listen to the next episode in this series on South Jersey wineries.